Good morning. Uh, my name is Sarah King. I am a portfolio manager at EPSRC in based at um, Polaris House in Swindon. Um, I the e infrastructure team um, looks after um, hardware, software, and people um, to provide the research communities with access to um, what is now an increasingly specialised e infrastructure. In terms of hardware. Um, we look after things like access and procurement of the National Computing Resource, which is Archer and Archer 2. And we also look after the access um, to the, um, to the tier, tier 2 services. For software, we've got various calls, which I'll talk about in a later slide. And in terms of people, we provide lots of support and training to develop skilled software and hardware individuals um, for the research communities. In terms of... Um, the UKRI. We, as in 2018, as you are probably aware, the research councils all came together under UKRI, um, and we now have across UKRI a do, director of research infrastructure who is Dr. James Hetherington. He is looking to bring together the e infrastructure requirements across um, of all the councils to develop um, a coherent strategy for cross UKRI investment moving forward. But I just want to emphasise that software remains one of the core pillars of the um, UKRI e-infrastructure e strategy. In, in terms of their vision, um, their vision is to build a globally unrivalled environment for the development of software to power research and innovation. Um, EPSRC had their own e-infrastructure strategy developed in 2018 and this was this was taken forward um, and many of the requirements um, that were in the EPS um, strategy have gone forward into the um, UKRI um, UKRI wide infrastructure strategy okay in terms with software as an as an infrastructure EPSRC have long recognized that um, software plays an increasingly vital role in today's research. Um, in 2014, the Software Sustainability Institute ran a survey of academics, which uh, the results reported that 92% of academics reported they use research software and 69 reported that it would not be practical to conduct their research without software. So software is a critical element to modern day um, research and EPSRC and UKRI fully recognise that. The software support um, that we provide is, is, is driven really by the need to develop code that is future proof. There's a focus on software system sustainability and also on community building and network skills acquisition. Um, within EPSRC, software investments are covered in both the research infrastructure theme and also the ICT theme. So calls come from either of those two, um, either of those two themes. Um, in terms of research infrastructure, we have run um, over the last eight years, we've run a number of software for the future. Um, calls. We have run um, calls for HPC software development and also for the collaborative computational projects which are network grants centred around developing research software um, for use within the EPSRC research community. One of our um, successful, uh, more successful or more impactful shall we say um, investments has been the Software Sustainability Institute which has run since 2010 and Shoab Sufi will be talking to you um, with a lot in a lot more detail about their work um, this afternoon. Um, basically what they're looking to do is to facilitate the advancement of software and research by cultivating better more sustainable research software to enable world-class research. They are looking to raise the profile of the contribution that software makes to research out outcomes. And they are also working on what Jonathan mentioned earlier, this uh, the concept of the hidden ref, um, which is working to ensure that recognition for software contributions uh, made in research projects is actually, um, you can actually see them because at the moment they're not included in the traditional, um, the traditional ref. They have an excellent website with guides and tips and things like that for moving um, moving to open source platforms for your software. 
and they are also very uh, they were instrumental in developing the role of the research software engineer. Um, the that role has been has been increasingly recognised in the last uh, about eight years. There are no research software engineering groups around the country. I think there's probably about 28, maybe in excess of 28 of them now. And they were also responsible for setting up the Society of Research Software Engineers. Um, so yeah, moving on, um, EPSRC has had since, um, since 2011 actually, a software infrastructure strategy, but in 2008 it was reworked um, to support the development of reliable and reproducible research software by providing funding, training and appropriate policy and best, work, best practice um, frameworks. Okay, so the elements of that are software, people, impact, trust and accessibility. In terms of software, um, we wanted to ensure that the software codes used by the community um, continue to develop, to be developed and maintained and pro we provide funding to support the UK code base. That support has been aimed at the, at, at the production of um, focus on novel codes, development of new functionality in existing codes to address um, the wide range of um, research challenges, and also re-engineering of existing codes for the emerging hardware architectures. In terms of people, um, we look to support training and skill development across all career stages and levels of expertise. Um, we support collaborative com um, communities who work together, training and career development for students, postdocs and research software engineers. Um, I'm not sure how, much, how many of you will have come across the research software engineer um, movement, but they, the research software engineers are individuals who combine a solid understanding of research with expertise in programming and software engineering. And we have long recognised that they play a critical role um, in developing robust research software that has led the way um, and we have led the way in funding them via um, the RSE fellowships. We will continue to provide long term support mechanisms for potential and established leaders. Um, and I just want to also raise the um, raise the profile. We have a, a call open at the moment for research software engineer fellowships. This is the third call that APSRC have run. There are currently 10, fellow, 10 RSE fellowships um, out in the, um, in the research community. This call is slightly different in that we, um, it's not just EPSRC um, this time. We have funding for between four and eight um, EPSRC fellows and STFC have joined the call offering a fellowship for one, um, one fellow within their remit. Um, another another um, people aspect that we are working on is the research technical professionals. We recognise that um, the research technical professionals are people who they may not be conducting research themselves, but they facilitate the um, outcomes of successful research and they play a crucial role in enable, enabling high quality research. Um, the team is working to address, well, the team and UKRI is working to address this by um, clarifying the eligibility of RTPs as, ex as investigators on grants and looking at other mechanisms by which we can support them. In terms of um, digital training skills um, at, um, at PhD level, we are working to ensure that digital skills training features strongly in future CDTs um, and in terms of training provision we fund software training provision across um, various, part, various aspects of the UK. The software sustainability um, it runs software carpentries, train the trainer activities um, to disseminate knowledge. We fund HPC short courses um, which are available, I think, in Edinburgh and, and the Summer Academy takes place in Cambridge um, each year. And also, interesting that the CCPs, the Collaborative Computational Projects, quite a number of those run summer schools, which is quite, um, with quite substantial open access. Um, and it's definitely worth having a look at, um, at what they do. One 
um, having a captive audience today, what I would like to make you aware of is that EPSRC encourages the funding of RC, um, research software engineers on grants. We accept RSEs as principal investigators and not just RSE fellows, but um, other RSEs as well. We accept RSEs as co-eyes, researcher co-eyes. And I would like to ask that if you do um, wish to ask for funding for an RSE on your grant, please refer to that role in the, um, in the role identifier. You can name them or you can just put them in as a research software engineer because what we're trying to do is we're monitoring data on this and at the current time, because it's not been standard practice to recognise the contribution of an RSE, um, it makes it difficult for us to monitor sort of like the impact that RSEs are having on, um, on research at the moment. Okay, in terms of impact, we are working to maximise the impact um, of research of um, software infrastructure on research. We would we like to promote the awareness and encourage interactions between industry and the academic software communities. Um, workshops are facilitated with, with the um, computational collaborative um, projects in the HEC consortia and industrial users to. Um, to spread that knowledge and share that share that knowledge and experience. The CCPs and HEC consortia provide outreach activities to enable access and exploit shared software resources. And we would we are aiming to try and publish guidance and best practice on, on improving the impact of research software, providing metrics around what makes software successful. In terms of software management plans, we like to see um, if you are producing software on grants, what your plans are to manage that software, um, what its future is. I think what we don't want to see is software that's just produced for one grant and then it, that's it and someone comes along and um, put, asks for funding for another grant and there's lots of reinventing the wheel. Um, we'd like to see sort of like the software that software sustained um, and used more widely where possible. Um, we're also looking to provide advice on how to publish and cite software where possible to improve software reuse. In terms of trust and ac accessibility, we want to ensure that software developed um, and used for research is, a, is of a high quality. It's accessible and it's sustainable. Um, we were looking to develop and implement a software accreditation, accreditation framework work, which can be used to um, assess and measure whether a piece of software is reusable and reliable. We encourage the sharing of examples of best practice in software development through um, case studies in areas such as continu continuous integration, documentation, release management, maintenance management, issue tracking, performance and scalability testing and also the use of appropriate repositories. Um, I know that um, Research Fish is not well well thought of um, within the research community but we would encourage you to report um, your software outputs on Research Fish because at the moment that's the um, that's the only means that we one of the only means that we have of actually recording impact. Okay so Looking forward, um, we are looking to have a UKRI-wide strategy for a digital research infrastructure that's currently under development. Um, there remains a strong case being made for the continued investment in people skills and software. Um, we are looking at the advent of exascale computing in terms of hardware and software requirements. Um, and there's also some investigation into the case for a national, um, a national research data plan um, and investment. Okay, and that's, that's all from me. Thank you.